Hey guys, I recently returned from the Southwest Kiln Conference and you've probably seen some of my videos showing firings and different events and activities that took place there. But what you've seen is just the tip of the iceberg. A friend of mine recently counted and said there were 11 different firings there. And so most of those firings took place on Saturday morning and I was literally all morning just running around like a chicken with its head cut off trying to film and record and photograph some of the different events that were going on and you know only getting maybe you know a fraction of that. The big firing of the event was that trench kiln firing which had something like a hundred pieces in it and uh, you saw that video was released uh, recently hopefully you've seen it. If you haven't seen that video I'll put the link to that right over here you can check that out. Uh, you know, and, and that was a big firing, definitely the star of the show. But there were a lot of other uh, very interesting and important firings that were going on, especially for those of you that are firing at home that, you know, have no intention of having a big, you know, 10 foot long trench kiln. For those of us that are doing more small scale firings, I think the other firings might be a little more educational. So this video today is going to show uh, four of those additional firings that took place on Saturday morning at the Kiln Conference. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll see some familiar faces. So these firings were done by uh, John Olson, Bobby Silas, uh, Tony Soares, and myself. As I said before, all of these firings were taking place simultaneously, except for mine. Mine was scheduled later in the day, and that allowed me to do more photography for the other firings that were going on. But most of these were going on at the same time. So I'm bouncing around taking some pictures here and taking some pictures there. And, uh, this included all the photography that I took of the trench kiln firing that you saw previously. You may see some pieces missing. You may realize that, that a certain stage of the firing didn't get much attention. Or, uh, for example, you might not see the finished pots coming out of the fires. And that was just a matter of uh, scheduling. I was busy doing other things. Or maybe those fires, the pots were taken out of those fires while I was doing my firing and therefore I missed that. I think today's video really captures the level of excitement and the activity that took place on Saturday morning at the Kiln Conference as all these firings were taking place at the same time. So I think you're gonna enjoy this. You can see the level of activity that's going on. This is early in the morning. Firings are getting started. People are getting organized. Some people are just watching. Uh, there's a lot of materials and a lot of pottery here. We're gonna start off showing the Hopi manure firing that Bobby Silas was in charge of. And these are tiles that were painted in a tile painting class the day before. And these piles are all slipped with Hopi clay. So we should get real similar colors to that Hopi kind of yellowish orange color. Uh, now this is Wayne Keene. He was in charge of the tile painting class and he's getting out some kiln furniture. Uh, this is John Olson's firing. You can see him here supervising some students digging the pit. He's going to fire some corrugated pottery in this in a little bit. <laughs> this is Wayne Keene using some authentic Hopi lighter fluid to get his fire started. This is just some juniper wood. He's going to start building a bed of coals to preheat those tiles. Bill Caver is going to start his chainsaw so he can cut some firewood. Looks like Bill might be having some trouble with that saw. Well, we'll check back with Bill in a little while. John's got his primary fire started. He's preheating his pots. And over here, Bobby has got his primary fire started and he's preheating his tiles and that pots that he's firing. So this shows John's firing. He's got some kiln furniture in there, those stones that are gonna use to stack the pottery on. Those are getting preheated as well, as well as the pottery building up a bed of coals, just preheating everything right now. And that's mostly corrugated pottery that's going into that. And there's John just relaxing and not working too hard at his firing. And here's Bobby's firing over here. Uh, it looks like it's going pretty good too. Just preheating everything and building that bed of coals. This is again called the primary fire. Now, Bill, he's still working on this chainsaw. Let's see if he gets it started now. Maybe we'll come back to Bill in a little while. He's still working on it. Now, here's John. He's uh, arranging his kiln furniture with that stick and then starting to stack pottery on top of it. 
So he's starting to load his kiln at this time. And there's old John Olson, and he's taking his time and loading this right. He is an old pro at firing. Uh, Bobby's primary fire has burned down too, and he's also starting to load the pottery, or the tiles as it were, into uh, his firing structure here over the coals. You know, there you, you do get kind of a insensitivity to heat if you work around it a lot. I know um, I was a firefighter and also a welder. Careful, Bobby, that kiln furniture hot. is hot. Holy cow, Ooh. I can't believe you touched that. Or I put it down and Burn my your fingers doing and that. Ah, you know. Those are nice little tile racks that Wayne brought to stack those tiles on. Now here, Tony Soares is taking some pictures of John Olson's firing which he's got pretty well loaded. Now it looks like they're just stacking some cover shirt over the bottoms of the pots to keep the fuel off of them. That looks like a nice pile of pottery there, John. Now here's Tony's firing. This is what he calls an urban Anazazi pottery firing. This uses charcoal and bricks. And he has a video showing how he does that. I'll put the link up down in the doobly-doo and also up above in case you want to see his video on that. But this is a really efficient way of firing uh, and it works good for in town because it doesn't make any smoke or flames to alert people or make them call the fire department. Uh, now John, he's got a separate fire going now and he's uh, He's taken these burning logs and kind of stacking them around the pottery. I think this is just more preheating, but I'm not sure. I, I'm honestly not very familiar with this way of firing, so I can only guess. But it looks like he's trying to preheat those pots even more at this stage. And it looks like Tony's got his kiln lit at this point. There's a little bit of juniper wood on top, and he's got the fire going. I'm going to get that charcoal burning. Here's the charcoal a little more involved. And hopefully Bill's gonna get that saw started this time. Come on, Bill. You can do it. Well, we'll come back to Bill. This is Bobby's manure firing. He's got, he's got sheep manure in there and he's got cow manure over the top. So there's a lot of fuel there and it looks like it's fully involved. Meanwhile, John is still stacking coals and burning logs around his pots. I, he's still preheating this at this stage. This called, uh, will you do the corrugating cooking without a kiln? Anybody else is part of So, yeah, it's not what I normally do, but it'll be fine. Tony's is going good. Those coals are hot. And there is Bobby's, and it's putting off a lot of manure smoke. Now, at this stage, I was trying to photograph the trench kiln firing. I had my camera set up doing this slow motion video and I looked over and my camera was about to light on fire. Now look, you'll see why in a second. So that is John's fire. He just lit it and my camera was sitting right next to it. So I ran over, grabbed the camera and moved it. John's fire got really hot, really fast. Now Bill is gonna get this saw started this time. Come on, Bill. Well, I'm not sure that that saw is ever going to get started. Bobby's fire is burning to coals. It's really hot at this point. And the nice thing about a manure fire is it keeps its shape and kind of holds the heat in. This is Tony's fire, and it also got very hot, somewhere over 900 degrees Celsius. And at this stage, it is smoking hot. Those pots are glowing in there. And here's mine. So I started mine after everybody else was pretty well involved. This is obviously a time-lapse video showing the burning down of this fire. And uh, it all went pretty fast, maybe 20 or 30 minutes uh, and got pretty hot. Now you can see at this point I'm pulling the coals away. Uh, we've got a nice stack of pottery inside there. We didn't break anything except Tori's Pookie, which cracked in a couple of places. Everything made it through, other than that, made it through real well. Uh, so I'm just pulling the coals away and letting it cool down. Now I'm gonna pull off some of those cover shirts so it can continue to cool down. And you can see some of the pottery in there. Um, 
I brought a number of pots to the kiln conference, um, but I managed to sell or trade away almost all of them. I only brought two pots home. So, um, you know, I consider that successful. Uh, but most of this was not my pottery. This was students' pottery or just other people that had come to the conference and asked me to fire their stuff. Uh, you can see the little face in there, that human effigy pot, that was mine. I traded that to Bobby Silas. Uh, but most of those you see there are not my pots. Everything looks like it came out really nice. John smothered his kiln. So this is the next morning after it's had a chance to cool off and he's just digging out the pots and looking at them, see how they came out. I think only that one little brown one there cracked. Everything else in John's firing came out real good. And he got that to over a thousand Celsius, so they fired nice and hot. Uh, now this is after the conference was kind of over, after we'd opened all the kilns and we're trying to get everybody together for a big group photograph. And as you can imagine, it's kind of like herding cats. It's okay. On the count of three, keep your eyes open. Everybody's face showing. Chris, not. Stop. <laughs> One, two, three. Good. Chris is trying to hide. It was a very successful conference, and there was a lot of people there. So, uh, really uh, great time everybody had. Everybody learned a lot, uh, shared information, made some nice pottery. So like I said, I, I came to the conference with a bunch of pottery and left with very little of it. So I traded a bunch of pottery to Bobby for a big old Sidyaki polychrome jar, which I think was a great trade. Uh, this is one pot I got out of it. This was in the trench kiln firing. This is a canteen. Uh, the paint's a little brown, but that's because it's manganese and it was in a reduction fire. So manganese turns a nice black in an oxidation fire. Still, I think it looks great. Uh, the brownishness kind of makes it look old. Uh, it's really a unique jar in that it has this hole in the middle uh, that you can run a strap through uh, that then has a tube on the inside so the water doesn't leak out. And then this, uh, this is my Tonto polychrome jar that I fired. That firing was not filmed, so I don't have any video of it, uh, but it came out pretty good. It was really windy. By the time I fired this, it was three in the afternoon and the wind was blowing. And so it came out kind of smoky and that was just because of the, the timing. And also um, the bottom blew off and that was, uh, I didn't preheat it well enough, and that's just because it was three in the afternoon and I was exhausted. So um, overall, I'm happy with how the pot came out. It could have been better, um, but I like the designs and I think it looks real old, so that's cool. All right, uh, I guess I'm about done showing you content from the Southwest Kiln Conference. So if you're tired of watching videos about the Southwest Kiln Conference, I'm gonna move forward. I might have a couple to throw in as extras, but for the most part, I'm done with those for now. If you did enjoy my content from the Southwest Kiln Conference, you should think about coming next year because what I showed just scratches the surface. There's a lot of good information there that can't possibly all be shared on video. Appreciate you coming along with me today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.